So it's been a while since I've been on the podcast and over the past two months, I went through a lot in my life and now I've decided to come back and get back into the swing of things just a little bit. First of all, I want to say thank everybody. Just thank everybody because I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers. I decided to get back on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. We decided to do some short reels and lo and behold, they blew up. I'm getting like a lot of views. You guys made it to my channel, had almost too many hits in the past couple of weeks. So I want to thank you guys and I want to say hello and welcome everybody to my channel. Um, I'm DJ J. Erica and this is the DJ J. Erica podcast and um, I want to try something different instead of doing like a real long show. I just want to do just just share my thoughts about everything that has transpired in regards to Hollywood in the past month or so. And I'm not going to really say people names because I just feel like everybody's lost too happy. But I just want to share my thoughts on the Hollywood realm. And while I feel like, you know, why I feel like Hollywood is crumbling right before our very eyes. And try to try to put the pieces together of why it seems as if so many situations is transpiring all at once in Hollywood. And what will be the next steps for the viewing public if Hollywood was to completely crash and go away, right? So I want you guys to sit back, listen to me. And since this is a YouTube platform, you guys will have to read between the lines a bit because, um, you know, they, they're always trying to, uh, deal with the guidelines and you know take people pages down and stuff like that and my page is just starting to get up and running so i want to try to follow the guidelines with youtube so just stick with me so that's how we're going to handle this so there's been a lot of lawsuits dropping on celebrities left and right one massive lawsuit happened and from there there has been a trickle down effect with people coming out with various allegations of harassment and things of that nature. Remember, just follow me. I'm in code, but I'm talking a little bit in between the lines, read between the lines. And also, there's been other allegations coming out against big, major executives, billionaire, movie producers, and creators. And, you know, just public figures that, that technically wouldn't be in Hollywood, but might be in Hollywood based off of their no notoriety. Um, and there has been so many things happening and it has, it had me just sitting there thinking like, is Hollywood in just the, the, the organization of Hollywood, is it crumbling right before our very eyes? Is this the time for the independent, movie producers arise because there is a lot of things that's transpired in the past 60 days with a lot of people being accused of things being exposed to things and there's the viewing public out there right that's starting to wake up and people are starting to see these people that they idolize which is something that we shouldn't do we shouldn't idolize anybody in a not so tasteful light any longer and if they did if they did have a certain perspective of an individual prior to them being exposed per se and as I sit back and watch everything I just feel like with YouTube everybody is so repetitive and I just sat as a viewer because I'm not just a content creator I watch what's being produced and I feel like everybody is so repetitive and this is the reason why I'm taking a different angle with my podcast and more so trying to find a different subject within everything that's already going on because if i was to report on something i'm pretty sure if you're a part of this black sector if you're a part of just the youtube community of news reporting you've heard this story or whatever story i'm talking about a million times let me turn my mic up a little bit you've heard this story a million times probably by now 
So it's a thing where why be repetitive? Why keep saying the same stuff over and over again if you guys already heard, heard it? So this is me taking my own perspective on what I think is happening in Hollywood and what would happen and what will happen once Hollywood completely implode. That's the big question. Now, I don't know if you guys seen recently, you know, we had a couple of actresses coming out, speaking out as well, saying that they're underpaid. Okay, so what would be the top things that would cause Hollywood to crumble, right? We've already had movie directors be accused and put in jail for allegations, right? It's a lot of uh, harassment lawsuits and things like that being thrown around. But one of the main reasons why I think Hollywood is crumbling and we're on the last few years of Hollywood is several factors. There's so many people within the circle that's just fed up you have and this is just not even just black people but white people people that's a part of the structure of hollywood that's been fed up for a long time from protesting because of the whole streaming situation where they were writing checks to actors and actresses and producers for like pennies on a dollar like literally one cent checks and one dollar checks stuff that they can't survive off of now once the strike is over, you're thinking everybody's getting back to business. We have black actresses coming out saying, hey, we're still not getting paid. And, you know, this particular actress, she also just stated how they say that they, they think she's not um, marketable overseas as well. Right. And the black actresses, they're also starting to become fed up outside of the non-black creators as well who's basically getting paid pennies on a dollar while Hollywood basically take advantage of them. So it's not just the black people, because before it was more so the black people complaining. Now everybody's complaining. Now everybody's getting fed up. And what does that lead to? It leads to the actors wanting to become the producers. And it leads to the actors saying, you know what? They might not want to pay me, but I can just independently produce this film. Kind of like how music is right now, right? Because originally in the music industry, there was gatekeepers moguls stuff like that that made it so certain hip-hop artists or musicians just in general was able to get into the industry and they had to comply had to do a lot of different strange things maybe allegedly to get where they wanted to go but the digital age came back to what i was saying so we were in the age of limewire where they made it so we could basically rip music steal music stuff like that and that was the first beginning of the digital age. And then it turned into MySpace and all these different ways of people being able to independently distribute their music. And then Soldier Boy knocked the door in and things have basically been independent for musicians ever since. But the biggest part that we miss out on is that it seems as if, if Hollywood continues to treat the actresses, the producers, and the talent the way that they've treated them, both professionally and personally, this can lead to an uprising. And that uprising is slowly happening, but it started off with like independent streamer distributors where they would take films or old films, sign contracts like Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that in the streamer age. But I feel like the biggest part of Hollywood imploding is these people are going to sit back and say, wait a minute, I'm the star. I'm the star. People are coming to see me. So if I put my own team together, start writing my own scripts, become my own producer, start streaming my own movies, people are just going to come to see me. And now I don't have to deal with what you're dealing with because now I can create my own streaming service or I can create my own membership so people can see my own productions that I'm writing instead of dealing with the same repetitive scripts that Hollywood produces and recreate every 20 years or so without the headache and all my money is going to come in my pocket right I've been seeing a lot of awesome film creators coming up the line and I'm the type of person that I like to support independent films because I know that it's hard you know as a person that lives an independent life myself as a podcaster I know that it's hard to really create something to really produce something and to really reach people like 
getting to the point of the subscribers that I have right now, it has been a fight. It has been a struggle. It has been years in the making, you know, um, in more ways than one. And I will go into the details, but I want to stick on the subject at hand. Um, for the most part, I feel like all of the actors and actresses, both black and white, eventually they're going to get fed up, but it's going to be more so led by the black community because the black actresses, they don't have much to lose, right? Unless it's certain contracts and stipulations. Once those contracts expire, there's nothing stopping them that I know of from uprising and saying, you know what? How about we all come together? How about we all create our own streaming app? How about we do something where we get our own script writers and produce our own shows and make it so we're not discriminated against per se. And then you have non-black filmmakers who's going to be like, you know what? That's a good idea. I already have the star power of my own. I know I can get more money from people subscribing to my website versus having to deal with these Hollywood executives who's wanting me to do certain things that's inappropriate for me to move head, move ahead in my career. I'm going to do this by myself. And I feel like we're going to see the Hollywood and the star power dis dissolve. And it's going to also be an uprising of new stars. That's how I personally feel. This is my opinion because of all the things that's happening right now. There's a reason, you know, there's a reason and season. That's, and, and I feel like we're in a, a big season of change and living within your purpose. And it's a thing where even if you don't want to evolve the spirit, God, whatever you want to have it, the universe, whatever you believe in, is going to push you or unveil the truth so much so that all of the frauds are going to get exposed and all of the people that's living in greatness is going to shine in a positive way, you know, and, 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 the downfall of these individuals who's caused harm towards people is going to be exactly what's needed for the uprise of the new generation of filmmakers. And when I say new generation, I'm not just talking about young people. I'm not just talking about people that's in their twenties and stuff like that. I'm talking about people that's been on YouTube grinding <laughs> that's in their forties that still have a dream and a vision that's been filmmakers for years. People are going to be like, man, how about I get them? How about how about I just go ahead and check them out instead of sitting here watching a producer that done this possibly or did that possibly or mistreated their staff possibly? Why not? You know, we start getting into this perspective of capitalism, but we don't realize that we as regular people, as people that they call us as less than or the poor people, we're the reason why so many of these Hollywood stars and creators and producers have become so powerful over the past, however long their career has been, because we're choosing to go into our pocketbooks and take the little bit of money that we're getting from our jobs or whatever we have in regards to income to give to them so they can live well, so they can live and, and buy an island, so they can have a production company, so they can have and pay staff and everything else. It's a part of the economy. And we're a big part of this economy. Some people say capitalism is a bad thing. But really think about it like this. No matter w what way you swing it, we all have a little bit of heart of capitalism, right? Because nobody wants to be poor. Nobody wants to be poor. And even if you're exchanging goods, it's still a form of capitalism because you're trying to maximize what you have with what you got, right? So like with most people, if you're a singer, you're going to sing and entertain people. Then you're going to try to monetize that, you know? If you like to make clothes or create clothes, it doesn't matter what religion it is. You're going to try to figure out a way to monetize yourself and capitalize off of what you have, right? And I feel like in this new age, I don't think people are going to view capitalism as a bad thing. The reason why we view it as a bad thing and we avoid it is because we've been tricked into believing that we can only tap into a certain amount of percent, uh, a certain percent of what the 1% has, right? Um, which is being able to uh, influence the masses to open their wallets and believe, right? But I feel like in this new age, in this new direction that we're going, and when it comes to just, not even just in Hollywood, but life, right? In the, in the real world, 
things like that is going to change. And I feel like in the beginning of the year, which is literally next week, 2024, so many more celebrities are going to get exposed for certain things and people that we view in a, in a high, you know, um, a highlight or, um, in a high regard will be exposed and more people are going to fall and it's going to cause and force regular folks to uprise in their own way. Now I'm not saying that these regular folks is going to all of a sudden uprise and be worth billions of dollars. Like the people that they, um, been exposing lately, but it's going to cause a rift and it's going to be a shift. And all of the people who's been being praised, all of the people who's been, um, being viewed in a high, in, in, in a high perspective, like I said, um, they're going to get exposed, you know, um, high regard, excuse me, the word, I keep using that word, high regard. People have been viewing in a high regard. Stick with me. y'all. I haven't podcasted in, in a while. Um, in a high regard, they're going to get exposed for not being what we think they are. And I feel like it's going to rock the world so bad that all of us regular people, we're not going to have any other option, but to build for self and to uprise as well. If you know what I mean, we have to stop thinking and making it in our head that because someone has a certain gift or someone has done this, or someone has reached a certain mass of people, that it's impossible for them to do certain things. You get what I'm saying? And it doesn't matter what their job title is and what realm they're a part of. There's wrongdoing in every position, whether it's film, whether it's life, whether it's counseling, whether it's whatever. Nobody is perfect. And that's the part that is so important for people to understand that just because a celebrity or a public figure has more money than you, that doesn't mean that they're a better person. That means that they've worked hard, but it could mean other things as well. People try to say that an individual is better when they have money. But to me, I feel like money really doesn't do anything but acerbate what your attitude has always been. So I feel like if you've been a good, loyal person and you are a solid in that um, behavior, then that's going to make it so when you do receive money, you're going to be an even better person, right? And sometimes money makes it so people change for the worse. But for me, I feel like if you get a certain amount of money and you change for the worse, that was already in your heart from the beginning and you weren't truly being yourself. You were pretending to be humble to get what you wanted. And once you got what you wanted, now the truth comes out. If y'all know what I'm saying. So like I said, I want to sit back and see how everything else is going to unfold for all the things that's been discussed on these YouTube streets. I can't say that I'm shocked, you know, um, I would say that a lot of this stuff is long overdue and whatever it is, it shall be, that's what it's going to be. Right. But I will say that while we're out here and, and I see so many of these blogs and, um, commentators that come out and they speak out and stuff like that, I think it's great, but just make sure while you're doing this stuff, you're safe. Yeah, while you're doing this stuff, you're paying attention because oftentimes, hold on, you guys. I think my thing just stopped. Okay. Oftentimes, people are not pleased when you expose them and put their business out on the street, especially when they're well off. You know, I feel like there's certain podcasters and YouTubers that have been bold enough to, I guess, try to expose certain people, but it's leading to other YouTubers to try to do the exact same thing they're doing to grow subscribers with a perspective of, I'm going to grow subscribers. I'm going to get this money real quick without any truth or evidence. And that can lead to you getting sued. And this is another thing I want to tap in while I'm at it. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people getting sued 
And I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be around that. Um, because there's so many allegations being thrown out here where you have YouTubers building their brands at a fast pace by, I guess, speaking out. But once you, if you have the evidence, do you, if you feel like you can protect yourself, do you, but then you have people that don't actually have evidence to back them up, just regurgitating the same story over and over again. And this is the thing why I haven't been on YouTube in a while outside of my own personal health issues. And I'm just starting to, you know, recover from that. Um, another big reason is because it's just too repetitive. It's like, how many different ways can we tell the same story? When do we start thinking for ourselves? When do we start bringing other things to the table for people to, um, enjoy and embark on mentally, right? To divulge in outside of repeating the same story that we heard over two months ago. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying that you don't like certain things and sharing your thoughts, but I feel like after going through, and, I, I've, and I'm an observer, so I went through tons of videos and everybody basically told the same story 12 ways, which is the reason why I'm not trying to sell the same story 12 ways because you guys already seen the story 12 different ways. What am I supposed to say? A hundred different ways. What am I supposed to say? You know, so this particular platform, you know, I talk and I, I say certain things on my thoughts of what all of this is going to lead to. And I feel like with all of the allegations and all of the things that's going on in regards to the public figures being exposed and, and celebrities being exposed, I feel like it's going to lead to a full collapse and crumble of Hollywood. And people are going to rebuild. I seen something online with 50 Cent saying that he wanted to work with Taraji P. Henson after Taraji P. Henson um, spoke out about her not being paid properly. And I just, and it sparked the thought like, you know what? If the people that's bad get exposed in Hollywood implodes, right? A lot of people are going to be removed from that. Then 50 Cent's film company, if you guys don't know, he just signed off and got a production company and he's building it. I forgot what state he's building it, but it, he just got approved to build a G unit film production um, company and studio similar to the Child of Perry Studios. And I feel like if Hollywood implodes, I feel like he's going to help to rebuild that, especially for the black sector. Things are going to shift so big and it's going to change everything. You know, I feel like <laughs> it's so many different ways that the independent filmmaker, black actresses has been mistreated. You know, people that's been dealing with a lot of torment due to these bad, allegedly these bad billionaires, you know, bad billionaire club. That's what I call it. They're going to uprise because there's so many people that's tired of being mistreated. But I feel like that's just in life in general. Like, I feel like so many different changes have happened for me in particularly that has made me like be like, yo, stop being comfortable. And I feel like maybe that's the reason why my channel is growing like it is now. But I just wanted to come on here and just try to touch on, a, a you know, my thoughts in regards to Hollywood. And how it's about time for it to change. And it's about time for things to really just be broken down to pieces to be rebuilt again. And it might not be rebuilt in the same house that it was destroyed and created. You know what I mean? It's going to possibly be another filmmaker. There might be multiple production companies. It might not be a whole thing where it's like, it's only Hollywood. Because when you look up the word Hollywood, who owns Hollywood? Who owns Hollywood? You never see a CEO. You know what I'm saying? We know that Tyler Perry owns Tyler Perry Studios. We know 50 Cent. He owns Genius Studios. But who's the owner of Hollywood? Did you ever think about that? Who's the people that's saying, yes, this person deserves this money? No, they don't. They never say who it is. But what happens when the people behind the scenes that's run everything don't have any more actors and actresses. What if they all came together and held hands and said, 
we're not doing it no more. And if that happens, what does that mean for you and me? What are we going to watch? What's going, what are we going to be doing for entertainment these days? Are we going to sit back and watch old reruns? But if Hollywood implodes, right, and it goes away, then maybe those reruns won't be here. Y'all, it'll affect so many people. It would affect so many people if it did. And I'm not talking about, when I say the word Hollywood, this is a broad perspective. This is talking about music industry as well. It just seems like so many of the top executives are going through so much. You know, um, top artists going through so much. People being exposed, people being called out. And, I, you know, I've seen videos of people calling out particular executives for not being this and not being that. Da, da, da. I want to see what the music industry is going to be in the next five to ten years. What is it going to be like? What is it going to be? Is everybody going to be locked up? Are we going to be able to listen to the music that we enjoyed from the 90s and 80s by the end of this? Are we going to be, or are we going to just have to stick with what the new stuff is? Like, what is next, y'all? Because we're literally watching people fall from high places. And then we see people shouting out folks but not really shouting out folks, confusing people like who's this, who's that. And that's also hurting their brand, which makes it so people don't want to support that brand because they're like, hold on, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And then it also hurts the person who came out because they're not speaking out and saying who's who and what's what. It's a little, it's a lot of allegations going on without any names being attached, but just assumptions of who it could be. And it's so many things being affected by this, man. It's so many things. And then we now, we have a thing where fire is under people's asses, right? Because they can't move how they wanted to move 20 years ago. They can't move how they did move. Excuse me. They did move 20 years ago. They can't move how they did move 40 years ago. Or they used to. Why? Because there's cameras everywhere. And people are watching. So if they see you even flinch or look a certain way. People are literally analyzing body language instead of the words coming out your mouth. We've had people sit here and I just read the comment section when people come on and, you know, they're like, man, this person is saying this, but this is their body language is saying that, you know, everybody is a professional body analysis now, you know, a truth teller, you know? Um, And that's interesting, but Body language is like one of the biggest forms of communication before verbal. And it's not even about what comes out of your mouth. You know, the most consistent and reliable way of telling and being able to um, be sure for the most part of how someone feels about you, you just watch the body language and see how they feel about you. You'll know how they feel about you, how they move around you, how they talk to you, how they stare at you. Not even talk to you, but how they stare at you. You know, interesting. And I just sit back and watch it. I'm just like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know if what you're saying is true. Even with the damage control, even with the press release, even with the things that people say, we're not believing it anymore. You know, I don't believe anything that comes out of anybody's mouth anymore. I just sit back and watch what pops up on the internet with them on camera and sit back and say, Hmm, Hmm. Should I believe that? Is it my role to believe that? I mean, I'm not signing their checks, but technically we are (laughs) because we're going to see these films. Yeah. Interesting. And it's so funny how they say one thing in this world of Hollywood, they'll say certain people, you know, you're only worth a certain amount. You don't translate well overseas. This, this, this. All of these things just so a movie can break a record and beat the box office. Like, you have this film breaking 18 million viewers. Or was it 18 million dollars it brought in? Something like that. 18 million dollars? On Christmas Day when it premiered? And you're still telling the actresses in the film? You don't translate overseas or you don't, you know, you know, like, like, come on, 
how long is these actresses going to fall for this? These actors going to fall for this? Like, how long are they going to sit back and let these people play in their face? How long? You know? And when will, you know, people, and particularly people of color, color, give the other producer a chance instead of being stuck in this? And what the hell is in their contracts, ladies and gentlemen, that made it so they can't get out of a situation knowing it's not valuing, it's not worth the time, they don't value them. They don't care about them. Mm. Man. <laughs> but this is more so like a tester podcast for me. So I know I'm going in. I don't want to make it too long, but I need to see if this actually works. I need to see if the algorithm works. I want to see if YouTube works. And I'm going to be getting more into details and conversations and thoughts and stuff, you know, and and thinking and everything else has been going on in the past week, but I'm trying to build this platform the safest way possible while filing and following the YouTube guidelines while also trying to protect my platform as it grows. Because oftentimes when you have a platform and it starts to grow, you get attacked. You have people trying to tear your page down. You have, you know, the system that you're on or the platform that you're utilizing attacking you as well, trying to prevent you from getting a certain peak. You have, haters (laughs) haters <laughs> that's going to report your page you just have a lot that comes with the growth of a platform and i take it really really seriously and i and i've been sitting back thinking like how am i going to use this how am i going to do this there's so many people that's been watching so many people enjoying my short reels and i did a survey you guys told me to do longer form videos so here i am talking on this platform but i'm just thinking about what's next we got a new year coming And I just wanted to share what's on my mind on what I think is to come. And what I think is to come, I don't think it's going to be pretty. This decade of the 2020s has been crazy. But I feel like it's going to get even more insane. Because there's going to be so many more people that you can't imagine. Wouldn't imagine falling from grace. All I know is that I personally, I'm pleased. If people are harming people, I'm pleased with the fact that there's folks stepping up and saying, hey, enough is enough. And I don't care how they get their justice. What I will say is that I hate to see, you know, anyone go through any form of abuse of any kind, any gender. And I hope that if an individual decides that they don't want to pursue financial compensation for themselves, they at least try to help the other people out that may be a victim or become a victim or potential upcoming victims of an individual to finally say what's what, to finally take the steps and go to the police. I just feel it's kind of strange that we're in this new age of everyone going on social media and streaming things that you should, po- you should handle behind the scenes and then let the media get in after it's handled. I feel like if you really take this serious, as you say, you would want to stop other people from becoming victimized by whoever it is that's harming you, you know? And I feel like it, it, it would, it would benefit just to go to the police, not even talk about it on social media, but just go to the police and handle it. Or just go to the police station, handle it, come back outside and announce it, I guess, to protect yourself if that's what the problem is. That's how I personally think it would be probably the best way. But I can't say, right, because I'm not the victim. But, you know, you just want to make sure that everybody that's dealing with a situation like whatever with predators stuff like that in the industry they have an opportunity to have their voice heard but also being brave enough to say the individual who's harmed them so no other people become victims of the person because you're not doing anybody else a benefit by talking about it and then not doing anything about it you know so i don't know you guys can share your thoughts um, and opinions. And it's, it's another thing I want to 
do I want to talk about a perspective, right? And before I get off of here, right, it's it's Christmas time. Christmas is past yesterday, this week, and we're working towards the new year. And I seen a clip, and uh, it was a young boy, and his father was recording him opening up his Christmas gift. And this kid said he wanted, like, the PlayStation 4 or 5, right? And I guess he made it clear that he wanted that video game console. And the father <laughs> took the camera to record his son. He opens the box and it's an Xbox, right? He opens the, the gift and it's an Xbox. And he screams, this is not what I asked for. And he stumps off and runs upstairs because he's upset that his father bought him an Xbox. That's crazy, right? Now, the question is, who's in the wrong? Is the father in the wrong for knowing that their child wanted a particular gift? And instead of him letting him, like, explaining to him, like, hey, we don't have the money. I don't know if he did or not. Um, We can only get you this, what we can afford. Or is the child wrong for being a brat and not being appreciative that he actually got a video game console and he should just be thankful? What would you do if your child behaved that way? What is your thoughts about that? There's certain things that I see on the internet and I'm just like, whoo, I had seen another thing on the internet and it was this woman and a man and they were arguing profusely about the woman giving the child to this man, her baby father's mother, because she was tired of raising the child by herself. She was claiming that the father wasn't around and she didn't want to deal with the baby anymore. So she said he wasn't showing up. So she decided to just give the baby to the, the grandmother. And she basically said that she doesn't want the kid anymore. So they're arguing back and forth about this, about who wants this baby. And all I kept thinking is that, Shouldn't you guys discuss that before having your entanglement? You know, I just feel like it's so many people out here that's irresponsible putting kids in bad situations, you know, or purposely putting themselves in bad situations. And then they want to play the victim. And I think that's so strange. I think that's so strange to me. You know, no child should feel uncared for or unwanted by their parents. But I will say from, I guess you could say the devil advocate, I will say at least this individual decided to give the child to someone with a sound mind that will be willing to take care of the child without harming the child. Because we see that in the news, right? We see that in the news a lot, you know, where um, scumbag, I think I could say that on YouTube, parents, quote unquote parents, they hurt, hurt their own kids, you know? Sometimes they take them out of here you know, in a bad way. And they don't do or take the necessary steps to resolve or even try to figure out some type of new home for the child, offering them up for adoption or a family member that may want them. So I want to know who do you guys think is in the wrong in that situation? Is the mom for deciding to give the child to her baby's father's mother Is it the father for not being what they say, uh, quote unquote, allegedly an active father? Is it both their faults? Right? I want to know your thoughts about that. And have you guys been in that situation? And why? Why did you put yourself in that situation? Why would you want to put yourself in a situation of being a parent when you're not ready to be a parent? And why is it so many people that that's out there that choose and decide to get a, get in entanglements and create children that they know that they do not want. I don't understand that. I think that's really interesting and selfish. But those are my thoughts. Going to wrap up my pod. Um, y'all, if you got family out there, love them. If you got a spouse out there, love them. Got kids, love them. Got pets, love them. Show love. You know, I want to try to put some type of love in the air, right? Because 
all this timeline and social media out here has been nothing but hate and nastiness and gossip and and this this org secret organization that this and that is this and that i want to try to spread love i want to try to spread peace to everybody i hope you guys love on your family love on your kids love on yourself you know forget about all this other stuff that's out here the people that's out here if people's not being good to you let them go try to make the best decisions for you in life and really focus on your health that's something i've learned in my life because i just went through a health crisis myself and i'm getting over that I'm just getting through that. I'm still going through, but I'm getting through it. Really take care of yourself and show love while you can, you know? And if something doesn't feel right, just make sure you follow your instincts. Don't get caught up out here, man. It's so easy to get caught up when you need certain things, when you want certain things. It's so easy to get caught up with the wrong people trying to accomplish a goal. Well, I'm telling you right now out there that you can do whatever you want to do by yourself. If you have to compromise yourself and your morals and your dignity, it's not meant for you to have it with that person who's requesting that you do whatever. It's meant for you to strike it out on your own because God gives you a vision. You give yourself a vision. The universe gives you a vision. And I want to make sure that I, I clarify that I respect everybody that's out here. I don't view anybody less than out here when it comes to like religion, whatever. Um, But if you have whatever your dream is, if you're not harming people, do what you feel is the best for you. Do what you feel is in your spirit of what you're meant to do. And don't let nobody stop you and block you. And if somebody's trying to have you compromise yourself for that, it's not meant for you to get it that way. Some people are willing to do that, but most of us don't want to do that. You could even be in the, in the, in the ex film industry and still not want to do certain things. That's unacceptable. That's below your standards, you know? So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up my pod. Um, this is DJ's Eric podcast. Had to change it up a little bit. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I had these things where I was throwing around. Like, should I call this the nameless podcast? I don't know if I should call my... I don't even know if I should even call the podcast DJ Eric podcast anymore. Should I call it the nameless podcast? But no, I've been using DJ Eric podcast for years. What I will say is... I'm going to be trying to expound and grow as a podcaster and not have it all about the same crap that's being repetitive and being repeated repetitively over and over and over again. I could talk about stuff. I could focus on certain subjects. I could talk about certain people, the growth of my algorithm, but really why talk about it if every black YouTuber has spoke about it 150 and 11 times. So I hope all my new subscribers on here, hopefully you stay subscribed work with me. Um, I'm going to try to come back up here and I'll probably talk about some more topics and you guys can tell me other topics you want to talk about. Cause I'm not a, against talking about scenario topics. So if you guys want to leave a comment, you know, be anonymous. A lot of you guys have a YouTube channel. You're anonymous. Anyway, leave a comment down in the comment section, share your thoughts about my whole thing, what I talked about today, but also give me a scenario, right? Um, I want to try to share my perspective. And if you guys have a certain scenario that you're dealing with in life, whether it's like, should I take my new job? Um, should I leave this person? You know, whatever it is, I want to hear it below. And I'm going to select certain topics to discuss throughout this podcast. And this is a different type of vibe. You guys, I see the candle sitting there because this is where I'm at. This is what I've evolved to as, as a person, as a woman, I am no longer in the mind frame. It's just, let me talk this. Let me, uh, 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 let me, uh, uh. I don't know. I've just calmed down after I've been through this health crisis. Things have changed. 
And I'm just taking my time with things and I'm trying to evolve and grow. And if it's meant for me to be seen, if it's meant for me to be heard by the masses and tons of people, I know it's going to happen on his time, not on my time. Right. And I'm thankful to every subscriber here. And I'm literally about to be at 20,000 subscribers. I'm at 18,300 last time I checked on YouTube. Thank you. God bless you guys. I will be back on here. Um, give us, give it maybe a few days or so. I got to edit this pod. Uh, but do you guys think that I'm crazy or do you guys agree with me in regards to thinking that the Hollywood realm is about to like implode and it's just about to be sh a shit, like a shit, a shit show. Um, yeah. Share your thoughts about it and I'll catch you guys on the next podcast. Much love. Peace.